Hello again, everybody. I'm Pastor Tony, and welcome to lesson number 12, the final lesson in our first series on the Healing 101 course. And of course, we've entitled this particular series, First Steps, and uh, we're just laying that proper foundation for us moving forward and receiving healing, the healing that belongs to you, the healing that Jesus already bought and paid for you in his finished work on the cross. Now, if you were with us and if you were if you haven't been with us up to this point I really encourage you to go back and listen to the previous lessons before you get to this one I mean this will stand alone but we're really building upon each lesson as we go so yesterday or in the last lesson we were discussing the important uh, aspect in the principle the practice of building Bible hope on the inside of us you know, just like Abraham that we were talking about from Romans 4, uh, that he had to, against hope, believe in hope. He had to displace the old hope image that was on the inside of him and replace it with a Bible-based, Word of God-based hope image so that he could see himself the way God saw him. God saw him as the father of many nations. Abraham, at first, did not see himself that way in his own heart. He saw himself childless and not having an heir in his own house. So God had to change that inward image. And of course, we have to cooperate and consent with God and work with him in cooperation for his promises, his word to come to pass and manifest in our life. It's just not automatically gonna happen just because it's his will, just because he sees it. No, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, as Proverbs 23, seven says. So we're really talking about the important principle and practice of developing the right hope image on the inside of us, developing that root system of the Word of God in our hearts. And yesterday we left off in Psalm 1, but I want to go back over to the Old Testament and go back a little bit to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua, the first chapter, we're going to look at one verse here, and it's going to really run parallel with Psalm 1, 1 through 3 that we read yesterday. Here in Joshua 1, now let me just give you a little bit of background real quickly, that here in uh, Joshua 1, the reins were just turned over to Joshua to lead the children of, in, of Israel into the promised land. Of course, they had been under the leadership of Moses for 40 some odd years as uh, from the time that they were supernaturally delivered from the bondage of Egypt, you know, through the Red Sea into the wilderness, they were supposed, that previous generation was supposed to go into the promised land and possess it uh, 40 years earlier. But because they wouldn't do it, because of their disobedience, their unbelief, uh, they didn't get in, they failed to go in and possess the promised land that God had given them. See, just because God has given us something doesn't mean it's, automatically going to manifest in our life. There's a prime example of that right there. And thank God that God uses the good, the bad, and the ugly as examples in His Word because we can learn some things from uh, the bad and the ugly as well as the good. Those people who made mistakes, such as the children of Israel, we can go back and find out why they didn't get in and, and why they failed, and we can adjust that. We can learn from their mistakes. But of course, that previous generation had wandered in the wilderness for 40 some odd years, and uh, it was time for the next generation to go in and possess their promised land, led by Joshua. And this is some instructions that uh, the Lord himself gave to Joshua. Here in Joshua 1, we're just going to look at verse number 8 here today, but it says this book of the law, and we can say again this word of God. We have all 66 books of the Bible. We primarily live in the New Covenant, the New Testament. So we can say this word of God shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. As we were discussing yesterday from Psalm 1, that important practice and principle of the law of meditation. And again, don't let that, that word fool you. I know that, that that word has been hijacked and that practice has been hijacked by a lot of uh, you know, new age and occult practices and all those kind of things. But they're, they're running something that's counterfeit. This is the real right here. This is 
This is coming from the Lord himself. This is his instructions to Joshua and really to the children of Israel that they were to meditate in the word day and night. And remember what we said about the word meditate yesterday, that it actually means, some meaning of that means to ponder or think about something by talking to yourself. Whether it be external, where you're actually having words coming out of your mouth, your vocal cords, or you got a narrative going on in your head, both of those things are important. Sometimes, in order to shut everything else down, you have to actually speak out the Word of God out loud out of your mouth and let, let those words be heard by your own ears. So, notice right here, he says, This Word of God shall not depart from your mouth. See, when it departs from our language, our mouth, our narrative of our life, then that's a good indication it has departed from our meditation. It's departed from our heart as well. So he says, do not let the word of God depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. That's all the time, isn't it? And again, we discussed the, that process of meditation yesterday. That doesn't mean that we go around with a Bible stuck in our face and we're reading the Bible all day long. But what we're doing, every thought should be in alignment with and in agreement with what God said about us and to us in His Word. And that's really what he's talking about. Letting the Word of God be, your, be the dominant thought and belief system and the image maker in your heart. So he says, uh, but you shall meditate in it day and night. See, that gives no place for negative things to come in, unbelief, uh, other words, other voices to come in there and sow a seed of, of, of something we don't desire, weed seed that we don't desire. But it, it says, but you shall observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, after you've done that, notice it says, then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Now in our case, we're talking about uh, receiving healing and walking in divine health in our life. But again, prosperity and success can reach over into any area in any part of our life. This principle of meditation in the Word of God is, it would go for any benefit, any blessing, anything that we desire from the Lord. And notice when we are meditating in the Word, what's happening when we're meditating in the Word? That image, that hope system is being formed and developed, that root system is being developed on the inside of us. And then we will make our way prosperous and we will have good success. That's always going to lead to prosperity in every regard, in every realm, <clears throat> and success in every realm and every area of our life. Now, again, like we said, that this was God's instruction to Joshua as he was about to lead this next generation into that promised land and take possession of it. So before you're going to be able to possess your promised land, you're going to have to meditate in the Word day and night and allow that hope image to be rooted and grounded on the inside of your heart. Without that, you're going to face challenges. In fact, just about anything in this life that we're going to face, that we're going to try to possess, any promised land, is going to have giants in it. It's going to have wall cities. It's going to have challenges and, and contradictions there. And we're going to have to face off with those. But we can't allow those things to be what we fix our focus of our attention and our, our heart on. We have to keep our heart fixed, our eyes of our heart fixed on the Word of God. So no matter what kind of report we've received, no matter what kind of symptoms or pain we have in our body, not saying that we deny those things, we're just saying that they have to take a back seat in our life to the Word of God. We have to allow the Word of God to be our, our dominant thought system, our attention, what we fix the eyes of our heart and our hope upon. And then we will have good success in life. In other words, we will receive 30, 60, 100 fold return, uh, just like Mark chapter 4 uh, tells us. Now, again, this generation going in, they're about to go in and they eventually did go in and possess that promised land because of this right here. They practice this. But that previous generation that failed to go in and possess their promised land, they, they did not do this, okay? They, didn't, they did not remember the Word of God. They did not make the Word of God their meditation day and night. And I tell you, it came, it came back to bite them in the, in, in the rear end, so to speak, as we like to say. And they did not. They failed to get in and possess their promised land. So let's look back at that previous generation and see where they failed and how their thought system, their belief system, their hope 
uh, their hope image on the inside of them was completely contrary to the word and how that prevented them from going in. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 1, and we have a lot to cover today, so I'm going to try to get as much out as we can, but Deuteronomy chapter 1, and uh, this is Moses reflecting back on the previous generation and their failure to get into the promised land. And of course, this was supposed to be a lesson and an encouragement and admonition for the next generation to go in and possess their promised land. But notice in Deuteronomy 1, verse 21, this is the, what the Lord had said to that previous generation. He said, look, <laughs> I mean, very first word is look. Now, he's not talking about these eyes. He's talking about the eyes of your heart. That is what the previous generation failed to do was look through the eyes of their heart and see what the Lord saw. So it says, look, the Lord has, the Lord your God has set the land before you. He has, in other words, he's given you the land. He's, he's put it out before you. All you have to go in and, and is go in and take it, possess it. He said he set the land before you. Look, see that in your the eyes of your hope. Go up and possess it as the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you. Do not fear or be discouraged. In other words, that's going to keep us from being in fear and being discouraged when we keep our eyes and we begin to look at what God has already set before us what he's already given to us, what he's already made available to us. But of course, that generation didn't do that. So we're going to skip down to verse number 26 and notice this. He says, Nevertheless, you would not go up, but rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. Now, why is that? Because they didn't look. They didn't see. They didn't develop that hope system by meditating in the word day and night. Verse 27, and you, and he goes on to say, And you complained in your tents and said, Because the Lord hates us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Now notice right there he says, You complained in your tents. See, we're going to find out what's in the heart of people when we find out how they're talking outside of church. You know, you can kind of put on a little front, you know, for a couple hours at, at, on, at, on Sundays and maybe midweek at church, but it's what you're saying when you're not in church. It's what you're saying in your house that really indicates what you're seeing in your heart. So notice that they were complaining. They weren't praising God. They weren't rejoicing. Uh, they weren't looking with expectation. They didn't have a strong, confident uh, confession of faith. Notice they, they were complained in their tents and said, because the Lord hates us. Notice that. Did, did the Lord hate them? Absolutely not. And see, it goes back to what we've been talking about the last couple of lessons. You have to have a revelation of God's unconditional love, His abundant grace, and His absolute goodness to us before you're going to have fertile ground to receive the promises of God and grow those in the garden of your heart. So that is way off course. They, were, they weren't even in left field. They were out of the ballpark, okay? It says, because the Lord hates us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Notice the dumb logic there that follows deception and lies. See, that deception and lies that the Lord hated them got over and they began to have dumb reasoning, thinking, well, God went to all this trouble, trouble to deliver us out of Egypt from the Egyptians to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Well, God would, could have just done it a lot easier by leaving them in Egypt, leaving them alone. The Egyptians would eventually have done that. <laughs> so that is just dumb at the highest, highest level. So notice in verse 28, it says, Where can we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying the people are greater and taller than we, and the cities are great and fortified up to heaven. Moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakim there. Now notice they have seen Notice that they were those those ten spies were relaying words to them. They were now the rest of the children of Israel never seen any of this. They were taking their word for it. But because they took their word over the two good spies that gave a good report, Joshua and Caleb, notice that it created the wrong image. See again, words are containers; they contain images, and that wrong image was put into their heart. They began to see things incorrectly. And they gravitated toward that negative report because they already believed the Lord hated them anyway. They were suspicious of the Lord and of his intents for them. So notice they got the whole wrong picture here. And of course, the wrong picture produced 
a discouraged, fearful heart. That's why they did not go up. See, if you have the right image and the right belief system in your heart, you will act right. You will behave right. You will possess what belongs to you, what God has given to you. But if you don't, I tell you, that's going to hinder you from going up and possessing your promised land. But notice on down to verse 29, then, he said, then I said to you, do not be terrified or afraid of them. No reason to be because of this verse 30. The Lord your God who goes before you, he will fight for you according to all he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. I want you to see that right there. The Lord God who goes before you, he's going to fight for us. See, that's what the Lord does. Now, you have to go, but the Lord goes before you to fight the battle, and you get the victory. So like in American football, if you, you know, when they hand, the quarterback hands the ball off to a running back, he better have a good offensive lineman or two in front of him clearing the way, or I tell you, the defense is going to eat him up right there. He's not going to get very far. If he's got some good offensive linemen in front of him, you know, just blocking, clearing the path, he can just run that ball right into the end zone. God wants you to run the ball to the end zone in your life because he's going to he's going to block. He's going to fight for you. He's going to get the battle. He's going to win the victory for you. And but notice in verse 31, this is something else they were supposed to see. And in the wilderness where you saw how the Lord your God carried you as, the, as a man carries his son in all the way that you went until you came to this place. Notice that they were supposed to see this. They were supposed to see this with their eyes, how the Lord cared for them. And because of his care for them, he carried them as a father would a son. There's that relationship again. Remember what Jesus said to the woman with this, your blood daughter, your faith has made you well. See, we're talking about a relationship with our father. Our father doesn't hate his kids. He doesn't he didn't hate anybody, I can tell you. But notice right here, he says, you need to see this. Lack of seeing this right here, recognition of our relationship with God as children to the Father will keep you seeing the wrong things and acting the wrong way. Now I've got a camera here. You may have been wondering what this is for. This is part of our illustration. But... Uh, I'm kind of a camera in, or a photography enthusiast, know enough to be dangerous, I guess, or whatever. But, uh, you know, I've got a camera here, and it's, it's a digital. Now, I, f I started out on film camera many years ago, if that tells you anything. But uh, this is a digital camera, but it's pretty much the same principle that operates both to some degree. But, you know, you can look through the viewfinder or the screen on the back now. They're, you know, they're more than just a viewfinder. You can actually see on the back screen what you're looking at. But that doesn't mean that you're supposed to be hitting the shutter button and allowing those images of everything you see on the inside of you. In fact, only the images that you want to record and allow inside are the ones that you press the shutter button and allow that light image on the inside of you. And see, they were what they were doing is they were taking pictures of the wrong things. And that was being recorded in the images of their heart. If you could open their heart up like a photo album, you would see it was full of pictures of giants, wall cities, impossibilities, challenges, all those things. And we would see why they didn't get into the promised land. When we look at your heart, when we, if we were to open it up like a photo album, we should see that you have taken pictures of the right thing. Yes, you probably saw other things, but you didn't click the shutter button and allow that image to get on the inside of you. And see, that is exactly what we're talking about. You may see a lot of things and hear a lot of things, but that, that doesn't mean they're all worthy of being in your photo album of your heart. Only those things that you actually allow in, the light that you allow in by the, hitting the shutter button, because that's what you choose, should be in the photograph or the photo images of our heart. Now notice uh, going on with that line of thinking to Numbers chapter 13. I'm just going to look at one verse here. This, this has given us an indication that they had the wrong image and they didn't change it. That was a problem. You know, we can all maybe have a wrong image to begin with like Abraham, but you got to change that if you're wanting uh, to get the harvest of God's word and healing in your life. But notice here in Lumber, Numbers chapter 13 and verse 33, they're, they're talking, same bunch here, where it's talking, they said, therefore we saw the giants the descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers, notice, in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. 
Notice we were as grasshoppers in our own sight. I tell you what, that tells us what sight are they talking about. Inside, this is the image they had. And that was a carryover from their slavery bondage days of Egypt. And that tells us right there that they never really, they never really re displaced and replaced that hope image. And that's what got them in trouble. Now, there's so many verses of Scripture we could look at, but let's go over to the New Testament, to the book of Hebrews, because the book of Hebrews chapter 3 and 4 actually gives uh, or, or uses this same bunch of people who didn't get into the Promised Land as an example. And Hebrews chapter 3 verse 19 says that they didn't get in because of unbelief. Their unbelief is because they had the wrong image, because they were meditating on the wrong thing, hearing the wrong thing. But notice here in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2, it says, For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word that they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Now I want you to see the way that's worded right there. It says, The word that they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. See, Again, we've quoted this before, but Romans chapter 10, verse 17 reads, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. In fact, it is a continual tense that you're hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing. But notice what this, uh, that generation did, and why they failed. They heard it. They didn't continue hearing it. They didn't continue seeing it. They didn't continue meditating on it. And see, that is all the difference in the world right there. Because right there it tells us they heard it, but then they forgot it. They heard it, went in one ear and out the other, but it, they didn't allow that word to go down into their heart. And they didn't meditate on it, think about it, talk to themselves about it, and water that seed on the inside of their heart. So they never really produced the right image through the process, the practice of meditation. Well, let's contrast that with a story over in Acts chapter 14. Acts the 14th chapter. Now this is where Paul and his entourage ministry team were going out and preaching the gospel. Now the gospel is he referred to in Acts chapter 20 verse 24. We'll be looking at this in further courses and less or series and lessons. He refers to it as the gospel of grace. Then he says in Acts chapter uh, 20 verse 32. You can just make a note of it. It says, So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are being sanctified. Notice the, the gospel of grace or the word of grace, when we hear it and hear it and hear it, continually builds us up and puts us in a position of receiving our inheritance. So with that in mind, let's look here in Acts chapter 14 and verse number 3. It says, Therefore we stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who is bearing witness to the word of his grace. There it is. Able to build you up, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Now notice on down to verse 7. And they were preaching the gospel there. That's the word of his grace. That's the word or, or the gospel of grace that is building us up. So they were preaching the gospel there. Verse 8. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. So he had a physical condition from birth that prevented him from walking. He was paralyzed. So notice he had never walked. But verse 9, he says, This man heard Paul speaking. And Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. Now notice it says there, at beginning of verse 9, it says, This man heard Paul speaking. Actually, this is in the uh, Greek tense i won't go into all the greek language and all that's not important but it's in the tense of a greek of the greek language which indicates that it was a continual action that he didn't just hear it once that he was actually following him around that he was following paul around paul was going to different places in that particular area there in that city and he was preaching the gospel so every meeting every service that man was there somehow he got there somebody probably brought him he got there and he was listening to Paul speaking. So it indicates that he was hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing over a period of time over services. He was hearing Paul speaking, hearing it, hearing it. Well, what's happening as he is hearing the Word of God? Well, he's engaging his heart and beginning to see the way God sees him, which is healed. 
He began to form that inner image or that hope of being healed, of receiving his healing, even though he had never seen himself walk before. God was doing something supernatural in hope, giving him a vision as he heard the word of him seeing himself, you know, walking and doing things that a healed person does. See, this is, this is powerful right here. So notice he said this man heard Paul speaking over and over and over again continuously, following him around hearing that. So he was engaged in his heart by hearing. And then he says, and Paul finally observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. So in other words, he didn't say this to this man. He didn't give this guy this command that he was about to give him on the first time he saw him or in the second, maybe the third. But he eventually saw that there was faith there present. How do you see it? that there was a demonstration, a manifestation in this guy. He was sitting on the edge of his seat. Man, you could tell that this guy was ready to possess his promised land. Why? Because that hope image had grown up into full assurance of hope. It had come to that full fruition, and it was ready. he was ready to put the sickle in because harvest time was here. So Paul, observing him intently, seeing that he had faith to be healed, and he said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet and notice, he leaped and walked. Man had never done this before. How did he do this? Because that image got so real on the inside of him, so clear on the inside of him from him hearing and hearing and hearing and engaging his heart. And probably when he wasn't hearing, he was pondering this, meditating on this. You know he was. That's why he's going to all these meetings. And that's why all of a sudden he had the faith to be healed. Faith gave the substance of the things that he hoped for in his heart. That hope image. And I tell you, harvest day came, D-Day came, and he, he walked out of that place leaping and praising God. I tell you, what a good report. Well, that's all the time I've got for this lesson and for this series. Join us in the next series as we pick up right from here. But we've laid the foundation for you. If you like additional materials, go to TonyCowan.org. We'll see you in the next series. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. We hope that it really blessed you. Hope you got a lot out of it. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you also turn on the notifications so that you get notified whenever we post a new video. Also, go ahead and hit that like button. And if God's doing awesome things in your life like we're believing Him for, then we would love for you to share that with us. So leave us a comment. Let us know all the good things God's doing in your life. We'll see you next time.